I think most of you have noticed that film is making a comeback, and for good reason. There is something about how film handles light and color that is hard to replicate digitally. Recently, a company called Dehancer reached out to me and asked me to try their film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve. I'm not a professional colorist and I don't know all that much about film stocks, but using Dehancer has been a great way of discovering what it is about analog film that resonates with me personally. I've tried to figure out if I can use this plugin not only as a way to perfectly emulate different film stocks, but also as a tool to create unique looks which are inspired by specific elements of film emulation. For this video, I've tried the Hanser on a handful of clips that I've gathered while traveling around New Zealand. I've also tried to use a variety of different lighting conditions. Everything from overcast days, sunlight, soft evening light, and I also wanted to see how the Hanser works on drone shots. I'll give you a walkthrough of how I use the plugin, but I do recommend that you refer to the Dehancer user manual as well. So this is not a paid partnership with Dehancer. They have asked me to give an honest review, so I will present you my opinion as we go along with the grading process. I did, however, get a free license to the program in exchange for making this video. I also received a promo code, so if you're interested in the plugin, you can follow the link in the description and use promo code ISEC for a 10% discount. Let's jump into Resolve and I'll show you how I use Dehancer. So for this video, I've chosen three different clips and the first one is this overcast day drone shot of a volcanic lake. The second one is of my girlfriend Anne, a close-up in golden hour. And the last one is during a harsh sunlit day in Tongariro National Park. So let's start with the first clip. You basically open up the color page, you open up the effects tab and you search for Dehancer. You drop it on a node and I personally like to name my nodes even if in this case I'm not gonna do any more grading than just what's available in Dehancer. First step in Dehancer is the input where you tell Dehancer what kind of footage it is. You can just choose camera and in this case it's a DJI drone. It's a Mavic 3 and it's D-Log. It already selected the format correctly for me. In the next step, just down here, you can correct some issues with the source clip. So if it's a bit overexposed or if the temperature is wrong. In this case, I think I'm going to bring down the exposure just slightly and then I'm ready to move on. So there is one way you can do this thing. You can follow the order of the steps that the answer has given you. Personally, I like to do it a slight different way. So I go straight down to film, which is basically the bulk of what the answer is. is there library of different film stocks and here you can find basically most of the popular film stocks both still photography and motion picture. The default one is actually one of the most popular ones it's the Kodak Vision 3 250D which is a daylight balanced film and the Vision 3 films are very popular in Hollywood for all kinds of big budget productions like I think for example that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was shot on this one the 200T but for this clip, we're gonna use the 250D one. Just underneath the drop-down menu with the film, you have the push-pull EV. So basically when you expose the film, depending on how much light it received at exposure, it will give you a different kind of color tone and the look of the contrast will change a bit. So the push-pull, you can kind of see what it does. It changes the colors a little bit and also the contrast. So next, I like to jump all the way down to the print. And now the print is in an analog film production pipeline, you expose the original negative in the camera, you develop it, and then you have to print it to something that is viewable. So that could be photo paper in the case of still photography. And in the case of movies, you print it onto a positive film that you can use for projector screenings. And the different print films also give their unique looks. So Dehancer does have a linear one, which is basically neutral. You can kind of create your own, but they also have some of the more popular analog emulations. One of the most popular ones is the Kodak 2383, which I'm gonna use for this example as well. In optical printing, you use printer lights, which you can set the temperature off. So you can see it changes the temperature slightly in the image as well. Uh, after that, you have a lot of creative control. You can set the exposure of the print here and also the tonal contrast. You can see in the scopes what it does. What I like to do is to activate the analog range limiter already, which basically brings back a bit of the blacks and the whites. And then before I continue in the print section, I scroll up one step to expand, which gives you some manual control of the white and black points. So I basically look at the scope and I try to find a good spot to put the black point. 
and same with the white point. And then finally, I adjust the tonal contrast again to something that I like. Under that, you have color density, which is basically a more perceptual increase in saturation. It's not just pulling all the hues up at the same time in a linear way, but you kind of you can see what it does. It, it makes the colors more thick, almost. Now I go back up again to film developer. And this is one step back, technically, which is when you develop the negative film, you can do different mixtures with the chemicals and the temperature of the bath and so on, and that will give you some different results. So if you enable that, you can give it a bit of extra contrast boost again. And I like the gamma correction quite a lot, which basically shifts the midtones within the contrast curve. And one of my favorite tools here is the color boost, which gives a really nice increase in saturation. So yeah, there is one more tool here, which is film compression which is basically something to emulate the way that film handles highlight roll-off. In film, the highlights clip really late. You can retain a lot of highlight detail. So if you enable film compression, you can see when you use the tonal range that it kind of gives it a bit of an HDR look. So you have to be careful with it, not to make it look a bit cheap. But in this case, I don't think it's needed. So I'll scroll down to the next step. In the color head, you can emulate the concept of dyeing the film. So you can enable it and you can either just give it an overall dye in different color channels, but you can also just give it a little bit of a tint in the shadows, midtones or highlights. Uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna use it for this clip. So I disable that and move on to film grain. Now film grain is one of the most important things if you want it to actually look like film. I like to go to the custom page and here you can change the size of the grain, the amount, so on. And quite importantly, the film resolution. So in analog film, the resolution is never bigger than the grain size. So since it's all chemical, so you kind of want to decrease a bit of the sharpness in the digital file and kind of match that to the grain. I just switch it around until I think it looks good. I don't like when it's way too grainy, but try to find a good middle ground. Moving on to halation, basically on film you usually get this blooming effect that's a bit red-orange and you usually get that around specular highlights or harsh contrast areas. Uh, so in this particular image I don't think it's gonna do much, but you can use it. You can go into custom mode, but yeah, on this particular shot I don't think it's needed, so I'm gonna move down to bloom. And bloom is also a similar thing that highlights and stuff glows out a bit, they bleed out. So it's sort of a type of glowing effect. And that I think is quite nice. You can see here how it affects the corners of the lake. So you don't want to overdo it, but I'm going to put a bit of it here. Something like that. And moving down to film damage, if you want to have like scratches and hairs and stuff on the film, I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I'm going to move on to film breath. So film breath basically occurs because of uneven coding on the film. And it gives some shifting in color and exposure between frames. So if you want it to really look like film, could be a good idea. I don't like to have too much of it. Gate weave, another analog thing where the film misses the sprockets as it goes through the camera. It makes the image kind of dance around a little bit. It can also be useful if you want it to really look like film. Also not too much, maybe. Overscan is if you want an overlay, like a Super 8 overlay or something. You can see here. I'm not going to use that now. Vignette. I have a pretty good vignette tool. I like to go all the way down and decrease the feather. Then I can see really clearly what areas are affected. So I change the aspect ratio a bit, change the size, and then I bring the feather back on and decrease the amount until I think it looks good. Something like that. And yeah, if you want to keep this look as a LUT, you can export a LUT and use it on, for example, a monitor on set or whatever you want. And yeah, looks pretty nice. I really like how the colors are popping out, but they're still quite neutral. They're not looking very digital, which I think that's a plus for Dehancer. And as I talked about in the intro, I also feel like you could totally use all these tools separately. If you only want the grain, you can just use the grain. But also if you want to take advantage of the way that film handles highlight roll off and blooming effects and glow and all those things, you can use all of these tools, but just remove the grain and the gate weave and all those things and have a pretty clean image that still takes some elements of film. It's all a thing you can just play around with. So I think there's a lot of tools that you can use and just have fun with really. But yeah, moving on to the next clip, different lighting situation. This time it's my girlfriend Anne at the beach, golden hour, a bit backlit. So we'll do the same thing again. Drop the enhancer on there, rename it. 
straight from dropping it on there it looks really shit so <laughs> we change to the right input select the camera in this case it's a Canon it's an R5 and again it chooses the correct format for me already the C-Log3 cinema gamut we'll see does it need any compensation I think it's pretty well exposed actually so I can probably leave it as it is it was a really warm light so the temperature also works I'm just gonna go straight down to the same step as last time I'm gonna choose a film stock let's try the 200T this one so it is a tungsten balanced film stock but you can definitely balance that it's all a creative thing in the end anyway so I'll do the push pull on the EV a bit find what I like that looks pretty good I'll go down again to the print I think I'm gonna keep it on linear for this example I activate the analog range limiter and then I will go to the expand change the black point and the white point until that looks good I think that looks really nice already I'm gonna go and see if I want to do anything in the developer contrast boost tiny tiny bit so very small adjustments this time and that shows how little you actually have to do if you have good lighting already might need some film compression on this one here you can really see what it does you can see here on the highlights how it really affects the roll off you can see here it's subtle but it definitely does a difference gonna skip the color head again there's not really anything I want to do here but on film grain again kind of switch it around a bit I like to take it down slightly like more of a subtle effect and drop the film resolution a bit I think that looks good halation could be something that's visible here let's try the custom mode see you can activate the mask mode. but yeah again just keep it subtle don't overdo it. Moving on to Bloom again, I think that could look quite nice with a subtle effect as well. Here as well you can go to custom settings if you want to. I think I'm fine with just putting a tiny bit of it here. Skipping the film damage, adding a little bit of film breath, a bit of gate weave. On all of these options you can do it on the custom mode if you want to. You can deep dive into it as much as you like really. No overscan, gonna add a bit of a vignette, just like a subtle one on this one. So oh, there we go, that's that clip. Nice and warm sunshine. Next up we have the harsh sunlight middle of the day. Once more, choose camera. Here I think I definitely need to drop the exposure a bit. Might also warm it up slightly. Maybe we could try a stills photography film for this one. Can try the cine still daylight film. Print. Let's try the Fuji film one. Just gonna do it quite quickly this one. And there we go, something like that maybe. But yeah, there we have it. And to summarize, what do I think of Dehancer? I think it's definitely very capable at doing what it's advertising itself to do, which is to emulate film. I also think that it has some really interesting tools that you can use for different creative reasons. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's worth a try. And if you're into film emulation, I, I'm pretty sure it's the best thing out there for now. You can do quite a lot within Resolve already, but it requires a lot more skill in color grading. They do also have an app, which I'm gonna show you in a second, which is pretty handy if you just wanna transfer photos straight to your phone, or if you've been taking photos with your phone, you can just do a quick edit, and it looks pretty damn good actually, so let's jump into the app. Let's just use another photo from the hike in Tongariro. And you basically open it up, and you already have quite a lot of presets here which are combinations of print paper and film stocks. So you can just easily switch through those. You can also go to the edit page where you can manually edit and down here in this menu, you can choose different film stocks. It's very similar to the plugin in Resolve actually. It has the print film, the film stocks, developer, really the same steps, same concepts. I earlier made an edit here I chose the Cinestill 800T for this one. In this one I used the Kodak Endura Glossy Paper. And yeah, it's, it's really exactly the same steps as in the plugin. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You just export it, save to your gallery, and that's as simple as it is. So yeah, it's a great way to very quickly just edit a photo and have it straight on your phone. And it looks really good actually. It creates really subtle edits and you definitely get that film vibe. So that's pretty much it. That's the answer. And yeah, 
Thanks for watching my first ever tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.